are you getting tired from games with zombies? Yes? Well, I'm certainly not. Like you probably guessed, this game has zombies and it's called Survivalist, top-down shooter with light crafting strategy to spice things up. The game takes place in the near future, one year after the collapse of civilization. You take the role of John Wheeler, a wealthy LA manager who owned an underground bunker in the middle of the desert filled with food and water for one year. On the 364th day, he picked up a signal for help on his radio coming from somewhere nearby. He goes out to investigate. You find a woman named Alice Locke, you help her and the rest is up to you to find out. Halfway through the game, the story picks up and starts to get interesting. And it has few twists. Usually in a game like this, the goal is to find out where the disease started, find a cure or save someone. Here, it's not like that. Your first priority is surviving. Some quests will lead to answers. To reach the end of the game, you have to complete 5 objectives, construct certain number and type of buildings, enough food to feed your community, neutralize all regional threats, find love, have at least one person in your community with max skill level in each of fitness, firearms, construction, farming and medicine. The game was first introduced for Xbox Live before landing on the PC platform, in its almost perfect mode. The most disappointing thing are the video options, only full screen resolution in large fonts. Textures are ok, movement of everyone is kind of robotic. All human and zombie characters differ from each other only by clothes and skin color. In sound there are only 3 options, sound effects, menu sound and music. But all those things are minor problems. The game is indie and it's awesome. However, the developer did make mouse and keyboard controls perfect. So many variations in control menu, I was really surprised by all this. And of course all keys can be rebind. You can play even with a controller. And now for the gameplay. Here is where the game shines. I'll start with the base building. After rescuing Alice you find out she has diabetes and she needs constant supply of insulin. Through the whole game you have to either buy it or searching for abandoned pharmacies. You and Alice are heading to the nearest town and there you find Isham, another survivor who will join you and decide that John's bunker will be your base. Here you will find the strategy part and it's giving orders to your people. And what are they? to bring supplies to your base and build. So Isham constructs, Alice is carrying and you complete quests. In the beginning you can only build shack, outhouse, wooden and wire fences, gates and wooden watchtower. After gaining few levels in constructions it will unlock more things, barn, concrete tower and pillbox. All the buildings will improve the life of your people. Don't make the wrong conclusions, for the most part this is action oriented game with nice story and it's not another with only crafting and surviving. The game wants from you to build certain number and type of buildings. That way you will have places for everyone and everything. The more people you have, the more buildings you need. They are used to store supplies and for people to sleep. Of course you need to defend your base. That's why you have watchtowers and pillboxes. When someone is inside them, it's more hard to shoot them. One extremely important element of the game is feeding your community and supplying them with water. In the first few hours you will eat cans and chips and water can be found in dead bodies, buildings, cars and water towers. But there is an easier way for providing both of them. After the mentioned hours you can plant crops. This way you will have constant supply of food. And if you don't want to search for water, build a well. It's also used for watering crops. You can take control of every single person in your community and make them do what the game allows you to do. I was quite surprised by the AI. When you give an order, there is no need to babysit them. When someone is thirsty or hungry, he goes where you store food and water. If you don't have them in your base, he or she is searching for you. If he wants to sleep, he goes in a building alone and after it's done, continues his task from where he stopped. Builder don't have enough materials? He goes to the nearest discovered place to get them. Sometimes suppliers encounter one or two zombies and they deal with them without a problem. You don't need to take control over them unless they are a big group. If this is the case, you better run. I didn't rely entirely on the AI and you don't have to. While people sleep, I feed them and give them water and supplies. Sometimes I take control of something and attack them. Simple but effective AI. Every single person has 5 skills to develop. Fitness, firearms, constructions, farming and medicine. Level 5 is the top but not all characters can reach it, they are just limited. Only when using certain skill you gain experience for it. For example, using a weapon will increase firearms. There is artificial way of gaining levels. You will find books for the respective skill and the only requirement is to carry them all the time. 
On the right side of the screen is shown the person you control, minimap, there is a big map also. What weapon he uses? Does he have bulletproof vest and fatigue? If you run for too long, the character is getting tired and you better stop in one place or just walk because if you see a zombie or looter, it will be hard to fight them. There are a few statistics that you need to keep an eye on. Hunger, thirst for smokers, lung cancer or Alice glucose level. When you walk or run without a break, people don't eat and drink, so keep that in mind. If you want to get somewhere quickly or people sleep and you don't have anything to do, speed up the game. But there is a risk. When you are in this mode and you control someone and zombie attack the character, you may not push him in time and this has consequences. The map is huge and dangerous, but there are flanger communities. From them you will get quests. Most of them are just killing looters. All communities have traders. From them you can buy and sell a lot of stuff. The currency here is gold. You will get it from searching building cars, bodies and completing quests. First thing you need to buy is backpack. It will let you carry more stuff with you. The bigger backpack and the higher level of fitness will allow you to take more things with you. You have a total of 6 weapons. Pistol, shotgun, assault rifle, sniper, RPG and Molotov cocktail. The shooting is as follows. You hold the right mouse button to lock on a target. For more accurate shots you have to stay in one place for the crosshair to turn red. But if you are not moving, you are sitting tuck. Bigger the firearms level, faster the crosshair turns red. It's fun to shoot with every weapon. They don't have recoil, but even if you have the highest level of firearms, doesn't guarantee every single shot to hit the target. Don't expect to get the RPG right from the beginning. You will start with pistol. For him it's easy to find ammo, but it gets progressively harder to find for better weapons. While the target is locked on, you can choose with the mouse to shoot the legs, torso or head. They have their advantages and disadvantages. The hit is harder to hit but guarantees quick kill. The torso is easy to hit but you do less damage. Shooting the legs leads zombies to limp and generally slow them down. Exploration is recommended and you will be rewarded for that. A lot of time I just walk around to see what I can find. You will need all supplies you can find for surviving the harsh environment. While exploring the unknown, you will stumble across life-threatening obstacles. One of them is zombies. They are most dangerous in a big group. You have to run sideways to avoid catching you unless you have some friends with you. Then you can tear them apart. If one catches you, you have limited time to push it away with the press of a button. Zombies differentiate by the strains they are infected. Green, blue, red and white. And the difference between them is the time that takes to turn you into a zombie and how quickly the carrier will die. The white strain kills you in seconds and zombies with him die harder. The other need more time to turn you and zombies die easier. There is antidote for them except the white, but they are pricey. You can buy them or sometimes find them. More dangerous than zombies are humans. After all, they can shoot you. Here you can die really fast. They are bulletproof vests but nothing can save you from the RPG or headshot. While doing quests or just exploring, you will find hostile communities where you cannot just walk in. You either have to make them come out or burn their fence and invite yourself. The last enemy most of the time surrenders and there are three choices to make here. Release him, kill him or make him join your community. The last option is the preferred one. This will be your main way of increasing the population of your community and you need people for all the activities. By the end of the game I had 3 farmers, 2 builders, 2 to bring supplies and 5 for the quests. In the game there are great firefights that will keep you on your toes. There is one almost certain thing when you face zombie or looter and this is getting injured. For treating wounds you need bandages. Here is the part with the crafting. While scavenging buildings, dead bodies and so on, you will find rags and cheap vodka. When you combine them, the result is bandages, but if you add matches, you will get Molotov cocktail. The one interesting thing about injuries is the limbs can get hurt and this lead to bringing down skill levels. When an arm or two get hurt, temporary and respectively bring down one or two levels of firearms. If the legs get injured, fitness will decrease. When you stop for a moment, the character alone will bandage himself, but if you want to stop bleeding quickly and restore fast your levels, ask someone to patch you. Often you will get messages that zombies or looters are on your tail. They are headed directly to your community and by bringing the big map you can see their position and you must quickly decide how to defend your base. There is one more interesting mechanic here and it's what people think of you. It plays major role for some missions and traders and even for the ending. 
you can improve it by doing quests, gifting books, wine, candy and cigarettes. Sometimes it's easier to threaten someone to do what you want if they fear you, but if they respect you enough, just ask politely. It's time for the sound design and dialogues. Some tracks are slow and calm, others feel like they came out from some 70s sci-fi movie. It's ok, there are not too many tracks and by the end of the game they start to annoy me a little. Voice acting is completely absent and it's not a bad thing because later in the game you will start to see repeating lines, you don't need to hear them. The dialogue between people is good, so is the right. They often see what they miss before the collapse and other things like that. When you beat the game, you unlock cheats. They are not in the traditional sense, it's just a menu from which you can add tons of stuff. You can change your appearance, add levels to the skills, survivors, all sorts of equipment, reveal the whole map, make the character invincible, choose the time of the day. All of them have submenus, so everything you saw until now can be spawned, even a cactus. One of the first things I did was this. built a small town. I consider those sheets half-baked. Don't get me wrong, I like the idea of creating something, but you will have fun for maybe 30 minutes with them. You cannot make new scenarios or entirely new map, you are just adding empty buildings to existing map with very little fun value. The basis for level creator is here and all of this feels like missed opportunity. It took me 34 hours to beat the game. Maybe they would be 35 if I didn't screw up two quests. I won't tell you who are they, but I will give you some advices. First, save your game often, especially when entering uncharted territories. Second, after you build wooden fence, surround the base with wire fence. That way you will keep enemies far away, especially zombies. When they gather around the base and someone is in a watchtower, you will see the bullets ricochet in the wooden fence and not hitting them. Third, don't rush to buy insulin, you will find plenty. Only if you mess around for too long, it won't be enough. Fourth, there is a faster way to accomplish the max all skill condition to win the game. This happens through the books that increase levels. Gathering farming experience is so slow and it helped a lot. I had a blast in every single minute in Survivalist. It may get repetitive for some, but I think it's worth buying. Although there is no new mechanics here, the game is quite addicting and it will keep you in front of the monitor for a long time. Building, guarding my community, giving tasks and so on. And you always be on your toes for looters attacking the base or zombies coming from nowhere. The developer constantly updates the game and listening to community feedback. He changed a lot of things for good. For the price, it offers tons of content. None of the shortcomings are game breaking. I highly recommend it. Thank you.